And you probably, uh, you remember that time when they were coming for him in the garden and they, he said, who are you looking for? And they said, we're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. And he goes, I am he. And they all like fall back all crazy, you know. Um, so that thing is called the Tetragrammaton. That's a big word uh, that has to do with the name of God, the I am. You know, when he told Moses, I am that I am. Um, that has to do with that, that, that name of God that's so powerful. And so I got thinking about that thing. You know, we look at the, I know about the I am's in John, those seven I am's. And they're a blessing, amen? They're, they're a huge blessing. But then I got to thinking, well, what about the opposite? That's one, that's one way I like to look into uh, the scriptures, you know, contrast, compare and contrast stuff. So here, I'm just going to put this over here real quick. So I got to thinking, well, what about some I am nots in the Bible? You know what I mean? What about some I am nots? If you know what something is, if something says I am this, then by definition, it is also at the same time not whatever the opposite of that thing is. So I hope this is a blessing to you. Um, I, I want us to look at some, quote, I am nots in Scripture and see if we can find some more power, some more power from God. Amen. So in Matthew chapter 9, we're going to look at verse 13. Matthew chapter 9, verse 13. The first I am not I want us to look at is the I am not of the divine. And in Matthew chapter 9, verse 13, the Bible says, But go ye and learn what that meaneth, is the Lord speaking, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Uh, so the, you know, the, the old preacher will tell the story, you know, he's preaching in the, the jails and He's like, that's right, I got a good message. If I just had a sinner in here, I'd have a good message, amen? If I, just, if I could just find a sinner, I'd have a message for him, amen? And then uh, he's, as he's getting going preaching, the, the guy, there's a guy in the back, I'm a sinner. And, you know, when you're preaching, you don't, you, even if you hear something like that, you're preaching. So you just, you're staying in the middle of the preaching. You're like, yeah, that's right, yeah, if I could just find a sinner. And uh, then, you know, you're trying to keep going. And then all of a sudden that guy's like, hey, I'm a sinner, and, you know, you think about if you were preaching and someone did that, something like that to you. Um, but uh, the old preacher, he said a uh, few times, you know, he would have to stop. Wait, what's that? You're a sinner? You want to get saved? All right, come up here. So stop preaching. Get someone saved. Amen. That, that, is the, that is the key. That is the purpose of preaching. That is the purpose of why the Lord Jesus Christ, the divine, came to this earth. It was, he was not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance. And in 2022, if we could just find a sinner as a church, we'd have a message for him, amen? Yeah. We'd have something for him. And is that your mindset, Christian? Are you looking for sinners to call to Jesus Christ? If you're not, you need to be. Amen. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15 says, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Are you faithfully saying the faithful saying to sinners? Very simple question. If you're not, there's a problem there. Uh, another, uh, another illustration I heard Doc say one time, he was out with the, one of his soul winning buddies and this guy, you know, he was like, he was saying he's all straight laced and I forget exactly how he said it, but he's like, man, this guy never even drank uh, heavy milk before he never he never drank anything you know he's like this straight laced guy right like kind of like pastor you know like when I first met pastor I would I would always get like I don't nowadays they say nowadays people throw throw around like cringe like oh that was cringe that was cringe and pastor he wasn't cringe but he was in a sense because I would leave uh, times times that I spent with him I would leave and I would I would just be like oh man he's so pure. And he's so whole. I had never been around anyone like that. I didn't come from that kind of background. I didn't come from a Bible believing or a Christian home, you know, to hang out with someone and there's no cursing. There's, it's just all clean and it's all just praising God. And it's, you know, it's, uh, that's how pastor was. He was pure. And so anyways, uh, Dr. Ruckman, he would go out soul winning with this guy. And if this guy who was picture pastor, that's what I did when I heard this story. Picture just this pure, just, 
pure as a driven snow, straight laced guy. And if he heard, you know, they were going to some rough areas to soul win, right? And if he heard someone take the Lord's name in vain, this guy would march up to them fearless and go, oh, you know my friend. And they'd be like, these guys, you know, bikers and, you know, whatever else. would be like, well, he's like, you know my friend. You said, that's my friend. You know him too? And that's how he would witness to these guys, you know, bold like that, right? He said, you know my friend. Uh, so are you calling people to your best friend, Christian, in 2022? It shouldn't be that hard. This world needs a friend now more than ever before. They need a friend. And I found a friend, amen? amen. Oh, such a friend. Amen. He loved me ere I knew him, amen? Uh, so there is an I am not of the divine. The Lord Jesus Christ, His purpose coming to this earth, He, he came on a mission, amen? He wasn't just here for fun and games. He was here to save sinners, call sinners to repentance. He wasn't come to call the righteous. And we get a lot of people nowadays that... Uh, uh, hang out more with, uh, it seems like we get to a certain point in our Christianity where we lose that. We won't, you know, go hang, we won't go around those people maybe that we used to hang out with at the bars, but we won't even get close enough to lead them to Christ. We won't even preach to them. We won't even witness to them. And that's wicked, man. That's wicked. The Lord Jesus Christ, he condescended to men of low estate to try to lead them to the Lord. So, uh, okay, the next, uh, the next I am not I want us to look at is the I am not of the doubter. Go over to Matthew chapter 8. So it should be like same page if you got a Ruckman reference Bible, bless God. Uh, if not, it's probably like a page away. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 8. Let's look at one of these I am nots of the doubter. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 8 verse 8, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. Amen. You got, and I am not worthy. That's one, uh, that's one of the I am nots of the doubter that you'll come across. Not worthy. The centurion here, though, he, you know the story, you know, Jesus comes, he's like, I'm not worthy that you should even come under the roof of my house. Just say the word and I know it'll all be good. And bless God, we, we know that's true. And, uh, you know, Jesus marveled at his faith, right? He marveled at the centurion's faith. And um, I, I want to give it to you this way, though the centurion, he was wiser and more faithful than most. The centurion believed on the great physician. Amen. Amen which Jesus Christ is the great physician, bless God. He will, he will heal, he will take care of you. But the centurion did not deem himself worthy of fellowship with Jesus Christ. Your friend comes over to your house, amen? <laughs> yeah, you're not worried about if you're, no, what are you talking about? Now, if someone said, I'm not, I'm not worthy for you to come in, I'd be like, this guy's a weirdo, man. Um, but uh, so I want to ask you this question. Do you come to the Lord Jesus Christ in your prayer life, how the centurion came to him? Do you treat it as a doctor's appointment? God, he is the great physician and praise the Lord for that. And he will heal you and you're doing a great thing when you come to him in prayer and you ask for the healing and you pray for people's health. I'm not saying that's wrong, but I'm saying, do you just, is it just like another trip to CVS for you? You know, they got to drive through at the pharmacy. Are you just driving through? Hey Lord, um, yeah, my... My elbow, my back, my neck, you know, I got, and this guy's got this wrong, this wrong. Or when you come to prayer time with the Lord, is it like you're talking to a friend? There are many doubters in the Christian life even who do not think that they're worthy of fellowship with Jesus Christ. And that is not true. He, we've, already, we've already seen he's a great friend. He's not just the great physician. He's a great friend. And a lost sinner feels unworthy and unacceptable of the helping. It's our job as Christians to tell them. I know if you've spent any time in, fellow, uh, in soul winning or visitation, you'll come across that person who just thinks, especially, you know, Sister Sheila in the jails, I'm sure Brother Randall, you come, that's a good thing about jails. They know they're a sinner in there, amen? The problem is they think, they, they think they're so much of a sinner. Who would take me? I'm not worthy. 
I'm not worthy that the Holy Spirit would come in and reside in me, this filthy vessel that I use for all manner of sin. It's our job as Christians to go tell them they're wrong <laughs> with, with love, right? With love. No, it, it, you, are, you are worthy as long as you go step by step how we're supposed to, right? You come to God, bring all that sin, bring all that uh, wickedness and dirt, and He'll clean you up. Amen. Amen? Isaiah 29. Go over to Isaiah 29 real quick. Isaiah chapter 29. We'll look at a good amount of verses. I don't know what this is. Kind of a teaching, kind of a preaching. I don't know. Dr. Ruckman, he, he always said, like, some of your, your, your teaching should kind of sound like preaching and vice versa, so I don't know. It, I just hope you get a blessing, but I'm giving you God's word. And, um, all right, Isaiah chapter 29, verse 12. The Bible says, let's, and we're going to look at the next kind of doubter, the next kind of I am not. In Isaiah chapter 29, verse 12, it says, And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. So the next kind of doubter you come across with these I am nots is the I am not well read. I am not a smart man. <laughs> I, I, I can't understand. I can't read those big words, you know. I think the, Brother Rob, you could probably correct me, but I think the average word is like less than two syllables in the King James Bible. Um, but you, you get a lot of people that knowingly or unknowingly hide behind their own ignorance. Um, they, they, uh, they have enough faith to get saved, but they don't have enough faith to believe that the Lord can teach them. You know, we heard Brother Ryman at the blowout one time talk about how he didn't know how to read. He, I think he even went to PBI without knowing how to read. It, his wife taught him how to read somewhere around there. But uh, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit will, will, will teach us, bring into remembrance things, you know. Uh, and yet we have many people today that are hiding behind that, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy that you come under my roof, I'm not smart enough, I didn't go to college, I can't possibly go to Bible school, I can't possibly preach, get up in a pulpit, I can't street preach, I can't, I can't remember those verses you guys do. Forget the fact that I see the kids go up and uh, recite Psalm 1, uh, you know, and they spend weeks and weeks and weeks on it. I can't, I'm too busy, I can't. I, I'm not well read. If you trust the Lord, He can teach you. There's no excuse. There's no reason why you can't read one more page, one more chapter. You don't understand the word? Do what my dad told me to do. Lost man, before Google or internet, Dad, what's this word mean? Look it up. I would always hear that from the other, other room. So you go to the dictionary, and oh man, I had such a hard childhood. Got to go to the dictionary, look up the word, and then guess what? You know a new word. Amen. amen. Do that, you know, a few times in the Bible and you'll learn some things. Amen? amen. Don't bring the Bible down to your ignorant level. How about you try to elevate to God's level? Amen? Amen. Okay, so you got the doubter that says I'm not worthy. You got the doubter that says I'm not well read. Then you got the doubter from Psalm chapter 40. Go over to Psalm chapter 40. Psalm 40. Psalm 40. The power of negative thinking, amen? <laughs> Psalm 40. This is a powerful word. I mean, what's one of the first words a kid learns? Amen? Probably like no and why. Uh, it's a powerful word. So they learn no, and then they learn why for when you tell them no. That's, I mean, that's, a, that's smart. Psalm 40, verse 12, the Bible says, let's look at this doubter right here. For innumerable evils have compassed me about. Mine iniquities have taken hold upon me that uh, they are more than the hairs of mine head. Therefore my heart Faileth me. Did you see there? It says, I am not 
able to look up. You get the I am not able. I am, you, you, you preach to someone, uh, you pray for them for years, and what do they tell you, a loved one maybe? I'm just not ready. I'm not ready to get saved. I'll get saved, uh, you know, come at a more convenient season, right? you almost persuaded, almost persuaded, but not quite yet. I'm not quite ready. I'm not able yet to get saved. I got to clean up a couple things, right? I, I don't want to be a hypocrite, so I, I'm going to do this thing right. That's what people say. You ever get those people? And yet the Bible says, boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. And um, it's only by the grace of God that I got saved. And uh, I knew I should have gotten saved for probably like a, around a year. But I was deceived into thinking that I had to clean up some things. I said, well, I'm doing this. As soon as I knew... Uh, you know, John 14, 6, amen, amen, that's the verse that got me saved. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Praise the Lord. Uh, what a verse, man. I'm like, oh, wow, okay, so it's Jesus. Well, I know some things in that Bible that I shouldn't be doing that I'm doing, so if I'm going to do this whole Christian thing, I'm going to do it. I'm going to like clean up some things. I'm going to stop doing this, stop doing that. And it's only by God's grace that I didn't die before I got saved. And a lot of you, I'm not saying in this room necessarily, but online, uh, folks that have not yet gotten saved, maybe you watch pastors' videos for the conspiracies, the deep stuff, the blue-blooded aliens, the Antichrist, the Great Reset, the candy. I don't know what it is. You, you're, you're, you're towing that line. You're going as far as you can before it feels a little uncomfortable I'm not quite ready to take that next step. I'm not quite ready to get saved. I'm not quite ready to give my life to Jesus Christ. I, I know that there's that Bible-believing church nearby. Uh, Pastor's website has all those resources. And I know that it's over there, but I'm just not ready yet. Um, I say this with charity. You need to get ready. Because something's coming. <laughs> Whether it's the Lord, you getting hit by a bus, you getting, I don't even know if I can say that word, I'll say having a heart attack, um, whatever it may be, something's coming. And you want to be ready for this thing. You don't want to be one of those doubters that says, I am not ready. You need to get saved today, right now. There's no excuse. If I don't give a full plan of salvation in this thing, there will be a link at the top comment of this video when it's uploaded that takes you to a video that gives you the full plan of salvation. I know a guy. Uh, and you will have an opportunity to get saved. Amen. I'm not ready to do that activity yet. I'm not ready to take that course. I'm not ready to join that meeting. I'm not ready to go out and street preach. I'm not ready to do visitation. I'm not... Fill in the blank, man. You need to get serious. Time is short. You need to get ready. God has given you so much and, and, and the ability. So stop saying, I am not able. Amen? All right, I'll get off that. Uh, I, okay, let's look at the next, I am not of the denier. So we looked at the, I, uh, go over to Luke chapter 18. We looked at the, I am not of the divine, Lord Jesus Christ, we looked at some of the I am nots of the doubters in the Bible. And now we're going to look at some of the I am nots of the deniers. Kind of like the difference between agnostic and atheist, right? Agnostic is just an atheist without conviction, I guess. Um, agnostic, they just like to play it safe, so they, they just doubt. I just have doubts. I just have doubts. Yeah, you're wicked. That's your doubt. I love that. It never gets old. What do they say? Like, same reason an atheist doesn't find God is the you know, same reason a, a thief doesn't find a police officer. Something like that. Yeah. I love that, man. That's so good. All right, Luke chapter 18, and look at verse 11. Let's look at this denier right here. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee. See all the commas? That I am not as other men are, comma, let it, let it sit. This is a smart guy. 
extortioners, <laughs> unjust, <laughs> adulterers, or even as this publican. <laughs> See all the commas? Man, I think they call, they call that, I don't know what they, ah. Uh, sorry, I'm having a conversation in my head. No big deal. Um, so you got this denier, the Pharisee, right? <laughs> So you got this denier that says, I am not as other men are. Or that might translate to, I am not worse. You know, you get talking to that soul, and they, uh, oh, what do you, uh, I'm a good guy, I never killed nobody, man. I'm no, uh, uh, yeah, I'm no Hitler, I'm no Mussolini, I'm no, those guys, those are the real bad guys, not me, man. I, you know, I, uh, I don't have any debt, I'm a good guy help old ladies cross the street, whatever, pick your, pick your thing. But it all centers around uh, this pride of, no one, I'm, I'm no worse than anyone else. I'm a good guy. I'm actually in good shape. And this Pharisee, he actually believed that. How embarrassing that that's like written right there for everyone to remember for all time. Uh, so now look at verse 13. This is where you want to be. You don't want to be the Pharisee. You want to be the publican. Amen. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Verse 14, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Now I'm going to turn it on you. Do you pray like the Pharisee or the publican? Are you listening to this sermon right now? Oh yeah, she needs to hear this. Yeah. So, too bad she's not here. She could get something. You know? Are you thinking of that? Guys are more feminine than girls nowadays, so it's probably a guy thinking that, talking like that too. You know? He needs to hear this. Yeah. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta watch out for that, man. Don't be an idiot like the Pharisee. Don't be a denier. Don't, that's like self-denial, right? This guy actually thought he was smart. He actually thought he was a good guy because he used big words and lots of commas. <laughs> but what does the Bible say? The publican went away more, justified more than this guy, man. Praise the Lord. God likes the lowly, the humble. If you're uh, professing yourself to be wise, don't worry. Give it enough time. You'll become a fool. Amen. So don't be that denier that says, I'm, no, I'm not worse. This, this, I'm going to point to this person. The Bible says something about comparing yourself to other people. And it says you're not wise if you do it. Um, next we got, uh, don't turn there, but Job chapter 10 verse 7 says, Thou knowest that I am not wicked. So that's our next denier. <laughs> I am not wicked. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Now I won't get into the dispensational stuff with Job and how there's more truth to his statement than you might think. But um, you're not Job. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you are wicked. Amen. <laughs> I'm wicked. And God help you if you run into this guy at visitation. Yeah. The I am not a sinner guy. Yeah. Or God help you if you are that guy on YouTube, preaching on a college campus, actually believing yourself when, I got to tell you, I, I root for these college kids sometimes when they come up and they put the, the preacher on the spot. They go, you're, you don't think you're a sinner? There's more wisdom sometimes with the lost than, than, than I don't, I mean, I hope that guy's saved, but uh, some of these preachers, on call, most often on college campuses, um, they'll go other places too, but these sinless perfection guys, they actually believe that they are a good person and not a sinner, wow. that they're not wicked. And yet the Bible says in Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it. It also says in 1 John 1, 8, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So if you say you have no sin, you're a liar and lying is a sin. Okay, so don't be the denier that says they're not wicked. Is that simple enough? I hope I don't have to park on that one too long. But you actually will come across this person. We've, had, we've dealt with people that have come into this church before. 
and have tried to uh, cause trouble. And they think that if you commit a sin, you'll lose your salvation. Go check out Brother Robert Randall's sermon on assurance of salvation. If you are watching this, if you have any problems with that, if you don't know about once saved, always saved, if you have doubts about it, if you're a doubter or a denier, whatever it is, Brother Robert Randall's sermon on our channel about assurance of salvation is one of the best sermons I've seen to get that thing straight because he dealt with that a lot in the jails. He would get some guys saved and then some Calvinists or some, or some fruit inspector, as we call them, would come along, talk him out of his salvation, and then this guy doesn't know what's going on. That's from the pits of hell, man. There's simplicity in salvation. You don't uh, jump in and out of the hand of God, amen? You're not born again and then unborn and born again, unborn again. You're only born again once. So watch out, especially you onlineers, I'm, pre I'm, I'm preaching to you right here. Watch out for that stuff. All right, uh, go over to Luke chapter 22. I'm having fun, amen? amen? I hope you guys are having fun. Onliners, I hope you're having fun too. I love you in the Lord. I want you, if you're not saved, I want you to get saved. If you're saved, I want you to know you're saved and that you can't get unsaved, amen? amen. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22, and let's look at verse 58. Let's look at our next denier here. Let's look at our last denier right here. Luke chapter 22, look at verse 58, and this is the scariest one. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. Go over to John 18. That's strike one, Pete. Careful, man. John 18, headed for a fall, man. John chapter 18, and let's look at verse 17. And I hope you're turning to the scriptures if you're watching online. I see a lot of comments of people complaining that we don't show the verses on the screen or the little bouncing ball for you, but God has given you a book for a reason. And so much blood has been shed so that you could get this book. And there are many people all across the world who don't have access to this book and you got one, uh, go to any dollar store. They have people that you can tell them you're, you don't have a dollar. They'll send you a Bible. You have no excuse. All right, sorry. I don't need to mean to get off that. It just makes me mad. It makes me mad that God did so much and put so much uh, effort and there was so much bloodshed uh, to give you a book and you're going to write a comment and complain that they didn't put it in front of your eyes for you. And you're a truther? You're looking for the truth? You're look yeah, I'm looking for the truth. Oh, yeah, now it's got to be meta for you to, to read your Bible. All right, John, I don't know where that came from. Probably somewhere good. John chapter 18, look at verse 17. All right, watch out, Pete. Then saith the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art not thou also one of this man's disciples? He saith, I am not. Lastly, look at verse 25. Verse 25, And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. The last denier you get is the I am not with him. I am not with him. Peter lost his discipleship right here, brethren. It's back to square one. Back to square one for Peter. Have you ever had to go back to square one in your Christian life? Sorry, do not pass go. The world knows stuff like that. You don't just get to, if you make it all the way to where you're almost at that, that, that goal, that thing you're going to achieve, the $200, right? And yet you get knocked out. You don't just go back one space. You go all the way back to the beginning. That's happened to me in my life, in my Christian life. I pray it doesn't happen to you. I don't have time to dwell on it now, but I can tell you there's been those moments. Uh, and they were good moments in my mind at the time when I got out of church. Uh, I thought I was doing something good for my family. Um, something that, you know, no one will call you out for. Everyone will say, I understand, brother. I'll pray for you. But... Uh, 
it's either Jesus Christ or Satan at the end of the day. And uh, who do you think wants you in church and who doesn't want you in church? I'm not, mm, I really wanted to call his name. I'm not talking about preachers online. I'm talking about at the end of the day, spiritually speaking, if there's a lion out there going about seeking whom he may devour and he's looking for the easy prey, am I easier prey when I'm around like-minded believers that pray for each other, that put it on the board on a weekly basis, that love each other and serve together? Or if I'm out in the woods somewhere by myself online, I wonder where Satan's going to be able to get me, uh, get me at. Anyways, 2 Timothy 2.13 says, If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot dis- deny himself. So praise the Lord dispensationally, after you're saved, you could pull a Peter. And you could say, I'm not with him. I'm not with San Jose Bible Baptist Church. I'm not with Pastor Gene Kim. I'm not with Jesus Christ. I'm not with anyone. I'm out. I'm done. And praise the Lord, he won't forsake you. And he won't leave you. And uh, praise the Lord, he'll chastise you. And praise the Lord, he'll take your peace and your joy. And your life will become a mess. And I am a walking, talking example of someone that can come back. By the grace of God. I fell out of church. I got out of it. I said, I'm not with Gene Kim. I'm not with this whole Bible-believing thing anymore. I'm not even with Christianity. And yet, that still small voice was always just, oh, remember Elijah? What are you doing, Elijah? What are you doing, Sean? Just slowly, gently, softly beckoning me back. And I want to encourage someone listening to this right now. Maybe that's you right now. Maybe you lost it. Maybe you went back to square one. I'm here literally as proof that it's not over. It's not over. The Lord can restore you. The fact that I'm up here right now, um, some of the you know, brethren know my story and stuff like that, but I'll, just, I'll save you the time and tell you, with each day, there are new mercies from the Lord Jesus Christ. And He will restore you. As long as you're breathing, man, you still got a chance. Get back in. Get back in. Peter got back in, praise the Lord. Man, everyone loves to uh, hate on Peter, but not too long after, Peter's saving thousands. (laughs) Woo! I'm preaching to thousands online right now. I don't know, maybe like a few hundred once they see it's not Gene Kim. Most of them are like, click. Not Gene, Ke- oh, that guy again? Okay, off. Whatever, man. <laughs> a viewer is someone who sees, not necessarily watches the whole time. So, got you on a technicality. You can do it. You can get back in this thing, man. The Lord can use you. It doesn't matter how many times you denied Him. Get right with Him again. All right, let's look at some good I am nots. All right? We made it. We made it over the hump. You know, all the negative stuff. Let's look at some good ones. Let's look at the I am nots of the dedicated. Go to Matthew chapter 3. We'll be, we're going downhill now, so we're, we're, we're getting close, close to the end here. Matthew chapter 3. Let's look at some I am nots of the dedicated. Some I am nots that we want to have in our Christian life. Matthew chapter 3 verse 11, the Bible says, uh, John the Baptist speaking, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. We have the I am not, it's not, I didn't mess up, don't worry. I am not worthy of the dedicated, amen? Amen. So we have an I am not worthy of the doubter, which is an I am not we do not want. But then there are some things as a dedicated Christian that you should realize and understand. One of them is, praise God, you're not worthy. Amen. I'm not worthy to be preaching to you right now. Amen. You're not worthy to be sitting in church right now. You should be locked up, man. You're sick. You should be out of here, man. They should have locked you up a long time ago. Most of you should be dead, man. But praise God, 
John openly acknowledges his unworthiness. Did you see that? As he's in the middle of being used by God for God's purpose. He's getting ready to baptize God. And he, but he's going, I'm not worthy, but hey, God told me to do it, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it with everything I got. That's what I'm doing right here, right now. I'm not worthy to be up here, but I have the opportunity. I feel like God called me to do it, so I'm going to do this thing, man. The Let the Lord do with it what he will. Um, no one is worthy of bearing those shoes, right? And yet, let me give you some things you can bear. All of us are worthy to bear a few things. I'm going to go quickly here. First thing you're worthy to bear, Christian, is you're worthy to bear the burdens of the brethren. Amen. Galatians 6, 2, uh, Lamentations 1, 14. You're worthy to bear the burdens of others. What an amazing, I mean, if that, was your, if that was the only thing you did your whole life, was you bore the burdens and you brought those burdens to the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer and you wept with people and you rejoiced with people and you hugged people and you looked people in the eye and they knew you cared about them. I, I mean, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a, a better Christian than that. That's one of the most important things in this, especially now, especially today with everything we're going through as a family. Amen. amen. We need some burden bearers. All right, the next thing you're worthy to bear, you're worthy to bear the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians 6, 17, when Paul's uh, basically telling everyone to shut up, he's like, I bear the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. No one can, no one judge me. Everyone just go away, all right? And he'll, he'll show you, man. Oh, man, he'll show you all those stripes he got for the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it's getting closer to where some marks are going to be uh, put out on Christians I'm talking about here. I'm not talking about other countries where it's been like that forever. I'm talking about the last bastion of freedom. Uh, it's coming. It's coming. You should start trying to prepare yourself to where, if the Lord should tarry, I mean, God forbid, but there might be some stripes getting handed out at some point. And if that were to happen, you know what the Lord's telling you? Hey, you're worthy. He was worthy, amen? He sure took some stripes for you and I. He was worthy to get up there on a cross. You, you want to emulate Jesus? What higher, greater way could there be than to go through something like that, man? You're worthy to bear those marks. Lastly, you're worthy to bear witness of the truth. You are worthy to bear witness of the truth. If nothing else... Um, you know, in the court of law, they'll call up a witness to testify what they saw, what happened, what did you hear? If someone came up to you and asked you, dude, you are so different now, what happened? Would you know what to say to them? Would you be able to tell them what happened to you? Maybe you don't know how to, you know, A, B, C, and you give them the Romans road, and you tell, be ready for this question and this question. Can you just tell someone what Jesus Christ did for you? You're worthy to do that, man. You don't, have to know any, you don't have to know any Bible to tell someone what Jesus Christ did for you. Amen? You could be, if you want to be that I'm not well read uh, ignoramus, you could do that. You could tell them what he did for you. So I want to encourage you with that. Go over to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, verse 7. Mark chapter 1, verse 7. We got John again. He's at it again. And he says in verse 7, uh, And preach, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. So if you didn't get the message before, not only are you not worthy to bear his shoes, you're not even worthy enough to untie his shoes. You're not even worthy enough to bear his shoelaces, amen? No one is. Um, that's the point. We can unloose, what we can unloose is some shackled sinners on their way to a devil's hell. We can unloose them for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Like that wild ass, amen? Where he told them, go unloose that wild ass. And when they ask you, what are you doing? 
Tell them the Lord hath need of them. You can go do that, man. You're worthy to go do that. All right, the next one, go to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. The dedicated, if you're a dedicated Christian, you're going to know you're not worthy. I mean, that's just a, that's just a fact of the matter, man. If you, if you think you are worthy, you've got a problem. You're probably that guy who thinks that you're not worse off than anyone. That's like some Pharisee stuff right there, man. All right, John chapter 1, and look at verse 20. John chapter 1, verse 20, here's John again. John the Baptist again. And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. <laughs> so John knew. It's like, Stop asking me. I'm nothing. I am nothing special. That's what he was saying. I'm not the Christ. I'm not some great prophet. I'm not Dr. Ruckman. I'm not Dr. Kim. I'm not Dr. Peacock. I'm not fill in the blank. I'm nothing special. But I'm just a guy, like Bob Jones said, I'm just a beggar telling another beggar how to get some bread. Amen. This thing is a lot easier than we make it. Stop trying to be something special. How about that? <laughs> You're nothing special and stop trying. Amen? I'm nothing special. Um, okay, last thing, uh, last thing I want to show you here is the I am nots, some definitive I am nots. Go over to Acts 26, Acts chapter 26. I really appreciate y'all again, once again. I hope this is a blessing to you, even if it's... Acts 26. Acts chapter 26. And look with me in verse 24. Acts chapter 26, verse 24. Uh, and as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul... Thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. Does this sound like you when you got saved? You started telling all your, your friends, your coworkers, your family members what happened to you. And they're like, man, you, what do you, you join some cult? What do you drink the Kool-Aid? What, you know, real, you know, street people talk a lot more honest and real than a lot of Christians sometimes. What happened to you, man? What's wrong with you? You hit your head or something? What are you, crazy? And you know what you said at that time? And I, I, if you're going to, you want some defini a definitive I am not? Hey, I am not mad. Yeah. I am like the maniac of Gadara. I am now clothed and sitting in my right mind. And I'm ready to go publish what the Lord hath done for me. And um, so I say that to say this, and this will go over to Romans chapter 1, so that's really close. Uh, stop flinching. Stop flinching when someone calls you crazy. When someone says, what are you in that Bible cult? Oh, you're King James only? Ooh, you believe numbers mean something? Ooh, like stop falling for it. What does a dog do? A dog waits to see if you're going to run, those ones that are like wired to chase and bite you. Yep. Then you run, and that triggers something in them to go bite you. Mm -hmm. So stand your ground. Say, I know, I'm sober-minded, man. Like, what did, what did Peter say? He's like, no, we're not, we're not drunk. Yeah. We're not drunk with new wine, seeing it's but the third hour of the day. Go back, go back with them. Be able to go back and forth. Give them a good comeback. All right, uh, and in Romans 1.16... You should say to them, I'm not mad. What you should also say is this. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Why? For it is the power of God unto salvation to every one that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Brethren, you ought not to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We got a lot of Christians... I mean, we got a lot of people that say they're Christians, but we got a lot of Christians, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, that are ashamed of their father. Anyone have any embarrassing dads that used to, man, my dad used to embarrass me. One of these guys that, you know, nowadays he, he'll walk around with a Hillary for prison shirt, you know. 
or he'll walk, like he'll just he'll just I mean he'll just he always was the guy making a stink of something you know he had to be the guy he didn't wait at the hostess stand he walked over and sat down in his table like without you know it was my dad he would embarrass me as a kid but you know what that's good for you it's good for you to get embarrassed and that's why it's so good for you to go out street preaching for your father Amen, there's no better way to look shameful in the eyes of the world than to yell at the top of your lungs about the Lord Jesus Christ or to sing uh, about the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but you ought to be bold, man. I mean, wasn't the Lord bold? He was bold enough to stay on that cross for you. He wasn't ashamed. And I might have had my Peter moment. I'll tell you this right now. And maybe you have watched this. I've had my Peter moment, bless God. But I'm at my Paul moment now, man. I'm past it. The Lord gave me victory over it. I'm not ashamed anymore. Uh, I'll sing on the street corner. A lot of you know, you know ask me, you know, I, I don't really sing specials in church. I don't think they're special or else I would. Um, but I'll sing on a street corner, man. I'll, string on a, I'll sing on a street corner just because I know people don't like it. <laughs> and because I don't like it. So if for no other reason to put my flesh down, man, that's why street preaching is so good. Singing, doing something for the Lord. You ought not to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And lastly, go over to John 7, and I'm going to end it right here. With these definitive I am nots. We saw the uh, I am not mad. So don't flinch, man. You're not crazy. Science always changes and comes back around anyways. Amen? They're, they lie. And then when they finally are forced to admit the truth, they act like they came up with it. <laughs> it's ridiculous, man. Uh, John chapter 7. Okay, sorry. Uh, yeah, so don't be mad. Don't be ashamed. Stop being embarrassed what God did for you and actually say it like you actually believe it's true. Do you have any idea what's at stake? Come on, brother, that's right. Souls, man. Amen. This, the wor- we're about to be, not, not we, sorry. i got to be careful online. The world is about to go into the tribulation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We are about to get out of here. <laughs> so, can you do me a favor on your way out? Can you stop being so weird and awkward with people when they ask you something about Jesus Christ and just talk like you have conviction and believe it's true? Okay, John chapter 7 and we're done. I'm going to have you flip to a few places here. John chapter, as I say that, right? John chapter 7 verse 28. Let's look at the I am nots. Oh, these are the best ones in my opinion. John chapter 7 Verse 28, then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, saying, Ye both know me, and ye know whence I am, and I am not come of myself, but he that sent me is true, whom ye know not. Look at John chapter 8, verse 16. Jesus said, And yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, neither are you, by the way, but I am the Father that sent me. Look at verse 23, And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. And that ought to be your your last uh, I am not, some definitive I am nots. Uh, Look at uh, chapter 16, I want you to see all of them here. Remember we we started this thing, there are those seven I am's in John. Well, I'm sorry not to throw too many numbers at you, smart Calvinists. There's also seven I am nots in the book of John coming from the lips of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord for that King James Bible. Oh, I love how mad it makes them. Amen. I love it. I just eat it up, man. All right. uh, John 16, verse 32. Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered every man to his own and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone. Because the Father is with me. You're not alone, Christian. Don't think you're alone. John chapter 17, verse 14. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them. Why? Because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. You are not of the world, Christian, so stop acting like it. Verse 16. 
They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. He said it twice for you. Lastly, John chapter 20 and verse 17. Let's perfect this thing. Let's complete it with the number seven in Jesus' name. John chapter 20, verse 17. John chapter 20, verse 17. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. Brethren, we are not yet ascended to our Father. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> but uh, it's coming. It's coming real close. Uh, it might get lonely down here, but we're never alone. Praise the Lord. We have each other. Even more important than that, we have the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We have God literally sitting on the throne of our heart. Yeah. So believe it. Act like it. Say it. Pray for it. Faithfully look up for the rapture. And if you're not ready, what, 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 did, brother, what did Brother Jack uh, Craler say? Ready or not, the Lord's going to say one day, ready or not, here I come. So get ready, okay? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your perfect word. And uh, thank you so much for this, uh, I don't know, teaching, preaching. Uh, I pray it was a blessing to the hearers. I pray if there's anyone that's been uh, watching and is not saved, I pray that today would be the day of their salvation. And I pray that if there's someone saved that's saying, I'm not ready to take that next step, or I'm not able, or whatever the excuse is, Lord, I pray that you just, just demolish that excuse and show them that they are able and they are worthy if you call them to do it and you help them to do it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.